Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, I'm here to help walk you through some of the structural uh, elements of the research argument essay. So hopefully you have a better handle on how to build your own. And you will notice that I put it up on week 16 under the learning materials. And you can access it there. Um, by going through modules, of course. I know some of this is cut off. Uh, don't worry about that. Now, I did that. I figured out that nice little trick where it embeds. Now, when you try to open it up, it's going to take a little bit longer. I want to say it's going to take 20 seconds, half a minute to open. And that's because there's a graphic that the original author put in here. And that takes up a lot of room in a Word document, and it makes it a lot slower to open and also to save. So be patient with that, or you can download it. If you download it, it's going to take a little bit longer to download as well. But just to let you know, you've got those options. So we've been working towards making this research argument essay rough draft here. And at the point when we're working on the rough draft, it's all about welding those big parts into place. We're welding the different parts of the car together. We're dropping in the engine. If we're obsessing a little bit about, you know, um, getting MLA format right or getting the quotation format right. Um, I don't want you to worry about that too much yet. The hardest thing is just getting those big chunks together. Remember the peer review, talking with a tutor, um, and then revising before the final draft is where you put that extra layer of polish on. That's where you're going to worry about the, the paint job. So let's just jump right into this. You'll notice it's got its title here. It's MLA format, looks very nice. It's 12 point times New Roman. It's got the name in the header. It's got a title, A Call to Action, Regulate Use of Cell Phones on the Road. So I'll go ahead and read the introduction to you. Uh, when a cell phone goes off in a classroom or at a concert, we're irritated, but at least our lives are not endangered. When we are on the road, however, irresponsible cell phone users are more than irritating. They are putting our lives at risk. Many of us have witnessed drivers so distracted by dialing and chatting that they resemble drunk drivers, weaving between lanes, for example, or nearly running down pedestrians and crosswalks. The number of bills to regulate the use of cell phones on the road have been introduced in state legislatures, but the time has come to push for their passage. Regulation is needed because drivers using phones are seriously impaired and because laws on negligent and reckless driving are not sufficient to punish offenders. So here's our thesis statement right here, right? And it's basically saying that there have to be laws on the books about drivers using cell phones because the way they can get prosecuted right now, just negligent, reckless driving, this person's going to argue isn't enough of a deterrent given how dangerous it is. You know, there needs to be um, a scarier punishment um, and therefore a whole new category. Now, these body paragraphs are all going to follow that triac paragraph structure, or at least TIA. So if you haven't reviewed that yet, I want you to take a second to do that, pause the video, come back. Remember, um, we've got topic sentence, restatement or restriction, illustration, analysis, and then finally concluding sentence. And of those, remember, TIA is the absolute minimum that you can do. And that's up to your judgment call. Remember, the R and the C are something you can incorporate if you really want to reinforce your main points or if you're worried that your audience is going to get somehow lost. So let's take a look at this, uh, this first support paragraph. I won't go through all of them because that's going to take way too long, but I'm going to highlight a few so you can take some notes. Um, no one can deny that cell phones have caused traffic deaths and injuries. Okay, there's a nice topic sentence. We don't know it's a topic sentence yet. We can't really know that until we read the rest of the paragraph, but I'm going to just throw a spoiler at you right there. Um, you know I hate spoilers. Um, I'm sorry I'm breaking my rule. According to research conducted by Len Bestoff at WRAL, cell phones were implicated in three fatal accidents November 1999 alone. I know this is like before some of you were born. 
I don't know what to tell you about that. Um, early November, two-year-old Morgan Pena was killed by a driver distracted by his cell phone. Morgan's mother, Patty Pena, reports that the driver, quote, ran a stop sign at 45 miles per hour, broadsided my vehicle, and killed Morgan as she sat in her car seat. A week later, corrections officer Shannon Smith, who was guarding prisoners by the side of the road, was killed by a woman distracted by a cell phone. Best off. On a Thanksgiving weekend that same month, John and Carol Hill were killed when a Naval Academy midshipman crashed into their parked car. The driver said in court that when he looked up from the cell phone he was dialing, he was three feet from the car and had no time to stop. Okay. So, like I said before, here is that topic sentence. This very first one that starts no one. After that, we've got all these different illustrations. That's that outside research. And that's going to continue. Um, the picture is something completely different. So all the way down here, that's all illustration. And you notice there are three different examples here. But look, notice we have a signal phrase right here. We talked about these in the drop quotation video. Len Bestoff at WRAL. Okay. So it's gotten the name Len Besthoff. We've got a claim to authority, WRAL. That might not look like a claim to authority, but what it means is that he is a journalist, a reporter for a news station or a radio station. And according to, there's our version of thinks, writes, or says. Now, then we have the example uh, of Morgan Pena. And then we have the example of Shannon Smith. And then at the end, we've got that parenthesis citation. Bestoff, and I guess there's no page number here, so it's just going to be parentheses, last, uh, last name, parentheses, and period. Now on this next, next example, notice this person didn't use a signal phrase. They're just talking about how this Naval Academy midshipman killed John and Carol Hill, but this person still has a last name and a page number. Now this page number is really funky. Look, it's got a B, it's got a letter, then it's got an eight. We fly, oops, whoa. Hopefully that didn't do anything weird to you, it probably did, okay. Um, if we fly all the way to the end of the paper, what you will notice is that you will be able to find it. Notice Besthoff Len, there's that information on the web, on the works cited page. The other one was Stockwell, Jamie. So it's from the Washington Post, which is a newspaper. And newspapers usually have a letter in the section. And notice they actually used a print newspaper. They just dug through them in order to get to that. Now, keep in mind, I'm not going to expect you to do that. Um, if you look at some newspapers online, it will still give you this kind of page number stuff. Um, if you're not given a page number for an online source uh, or a database source, that's okay. Don't deal with it. Now, so we've got that illustration part. Keep in mind that next part that is also essential in the paragraph is the analysis. And here comes the analysis right here. As these examples show, there's a nice little analysis phrase, cell phone use while driving is dangerous and even deadly in the most severe cases. Given the seriousness of this growing problem, it only makes sense to have one consistent law of the land to regulate this behavior and protect public safety. And protect public safety. Now, notice what happened. Um, there, these examples were given, which is that illustration part. And then this person, this author, answers the question, so what in the analysis? basically says, hey, let me tell you the point of me putting in those examples. It shows that self, cell phone use while driving is really dangerous. Um, and that also we should have one law to regulate this behavior. So this links it all the way back to the thesis statement. So that's a really nice analysis there. And then we've got the cartoon here. Yep, got my cell phone, my page, and my internet link, da 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 da, ha 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 ha. What they don't know, realize is that they're going to be, you know, smashed by, it looks like a rig truck head on. 
I've taken this picture out in some versions of the essay, but I'm going to leave it in here. Sometimes people feel like they really need to put in a graph or um, some kind of photo or picture to really make their argument or their paper make sense. Now, I'm okay with that, but what you got to realize is if your, your graph or your photo or whatever kind of image you have is used there, you still have to cite it. You've got to use like a figure one here. And then you're going to also put it on the, the works cited page. If it takes half a page, you still got to have an extra half page of writing. Otherwise, I'm going to have people just turning in photos to me. Um, so keep in mind, if you put in this photo, you're going to need to have a five and a half page essay. So there's that. We've got some other stuff here. Um, what I will notice here is notice uh, that we've got two authors. Um, once again, from the New England Journal of Medicine. So we have authors and we have a claim of authority. And the results are unsettling is that kind of uh, version of says, writes, or thinks. Notice this person has a quotation and it's more than four lines. And this is what we call block quotation format right here. Basically what this means is if the quotation is going to take four or more lines, you're going to select it all and put it into a block. You can select it right here and then move the actual margin over using the ruler function in Microsoft Word. Notice there's still a page number. Um, if you've got more questions about that, let me know. Um, but that is, you know, something that sometimes people need to do. I'm a little bit wor I get a little bit worried when I see lots of big block quotations because it should be about your words more than somebody else's. Okay, so what that means is you've got to be able to show that you're the person in control. And if it's just everybody else's quotes and you're not explaining them or connecting them, uh, it doesn't really look like you as the writer are in control of the essay. Now, getting back to here again we've got more support paragraphs and again they're usually they're they're done pretty well this is a student essay but in general it does what it needs to do now something really funky happens in, in this support paragraph laws passed by counties and towns have had some effect but it makes more sense to legislate that means create a law at the state level local laws are not likely to have the impact of state laws and keeping track of a wide variety of local laws is confusing for drivers even a spokesperson for Verizon Wireless has said that the statewide bans are preferable to, quote, a crazy patchwork quilt of ordinances. QTD in Hani A8. Now notice here, you've got a direct quotation, but it just doesn't say Hani in A8. It says quoted in. So what this means is in this source that Hani wrote, um, I forget what his first name was or her first name, Christine, it's called taking phones out of the driver's hands. Now, in that quote, uh, in that essay, uh, I mean, in that piece of journalism, um, there's a quote from a Verizon spokesperson. So it's a, it's a source within a source. And so that's why you say, hey, I couldn't find where the Verizon person said this on its own. I found this source within this other source. And that's why you've got quoted in there. Coming up last, um, we need to talk a little bit about the uh, counter argument rebuttal, but I'm going to save that for next video because we are almost out of time here. So stay tuned. Make sure you watch that next one.